Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's talk about a gravitational problem. So in this problem, we have four masses, each of the same mass m, that are arranged on the corners of a square. And the square has side r on each side. The question is, what is the force on this guy right here due to the other three? So this is Newton's universal law of gravitation. Right? Newton's universal law of gravitation says any two masses in the universe are attracted together, and the relationship is given by this, F equals negative G M1 M2 over R squared. Okay? The negative sign means that they're attracted together. It's along the line between the two masses. Mass one, mass two, r is the distance between them. So since all the masses are the same in this problem, that simplifies this quite a bit. But what we need to worry about is sort of the vector nature of these forces. So let's think about this particle in a little more detail, okay? Here's my object right there, but it's sitting on the corner of this square. Let's just draw one of the particles and see if we can calculate the force due to that one. Right, so let's look at this particle right here. What is the force on my yellow guy due to this pink guy? Well, it is clearly along the line. It is clearly going to be towards the other guy. And it's going to have some particular strength. Let's see if we can write that out. And we'll call this F1, the force due to number one. Okay. F1 is going to be equal to, and we don't have to worry about the negative sign anymore because we already drew the arrow that indicated the direction. So it just becomes G M of this one times M of that one gets us an M squared, and we're dividing by R squared. Okay. You have to be a little careful here because it's in a particular direction. And so let's call this the x direction, and we'll call this the y direction. So what is the force? It is in the x direction, which is an i hat. Okay, but that's not the only mass that is pulling on this test mass. We have another one right here. Okay. And that blue one is now going to apply a force in this direction, and let's call that F2. What is F2 going to be? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. F2 is going to be G M squared divided by how far away it is from the other object, and then of course we have to square that. But we don't really know what that distance is. Maybe we can figure it out, right? This is a triangle. This side of the triangle is R. This side of the triangle is R. If those are both equal, then this is a 1, 1, square root of 2 triangle. And so this becomes root 2 times R. So what do we have down here? We have root 2. 2 r quantity squared. Okay. And now we have to be careful about the direction here. Okay. It has an i hat component, it has a j hat component because it's going up at this angle. And so we need to worry about that. And the way we do this is there's some component in the i hat. Cosine theta, i hat, there's some component in the j hat, which is sine theta, j hat. And that theta just happens to be 45 degrees. And so we'll be able to plug those numbers in and simplify that quite a bit. All right, but there's one final force, which is, of course, due to this guy right here. And that, well, it's supposed to be green, but it looks a little more yellow. 
that causes a force going up, which is F3. So what is F3? F3 is, again, GM squared divided by how far away it is squared, which is just R squared. And that is all vertical, and so we put J hat on it. Okay. So now what do we do? We're looking for the overall force on this particle right here. F. But that's not too bad, right? It's just a vector sum of F1 plus F2 plus F3. And now we know all of those numbers. F1 is GM squared over R squared times I hat. F2 is this sum. GM squared Let's square out the bottom and just see what we get. If I square that root two, I get a two, and then I have an R squared. And then we have to worry about all this stuff. Cosine theta, but theta is 45 degrees. Okay? And so we can simplify that because cosine of 45 degrees is one over root two. Sine of 45 degrees is one over root two. And then we have to add F3. It's GM squared over R squared J hat. Now we can combine a bunch of terms. First off, you'll notice that everything has a GM squared over R squared. So let's just pull that out. GM squared over R squared. And then we're left with a whole bunch of stuff. What do we have? We have one I hat. That's this guy right here. For this thing, we've got to move this two into there because we had just factored out a gm squared of r squared. So this becomes one over two root two by hat with this one right here. And then this guy becomes one over two root two j hat. And then our last one is just right there, one j hat. And so finally we can put all these terms together. So what do we get? We get gm squared over r squared. And now we have one plus one over two root two. I hat, and then we have exact same thing for J hat. So in fact, we can just write it like this, I hat plus J hat. And so let's bring it out. We get G M squared over R squared times one plus one over two root two i hat plus j hat. That looks pretty cool. Why is that cool? Because now it's really easy to calculate the strength of the thing, and it's really easy to calculate the angle. In fact, you already know the angle. The angle has to be at 45 degrees. And if it's i hat plus j hat, it's going up at 45 degrees. So that makes sense. Calculating the magnitude is not too bad, since now we know the complete vector. There you go. All right, any questions on that one? Let me know. Good luck. Cheers.